Shalom Yasharala. First and foremost, I'd like to start this lesson by giving all praises, honor, and glory to the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rechaha Kodash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone who rule well and uh, taught me this 100% truth. Double salutations to the Akiam out there. Spreading this word in truth and sincerity and shalom to the few Akwath that are listening in today. I'm back at you with another lesson entitled Salvation is nearer than when we believed. Okay. And um I kinda went into a similar topic yesterday. Um, but that was uh after um, you know, obviously I'd seen the um those four UFO sightings. So I kind of went into it then, but even prior to that lesson, I was actually meant to do uh, the lesson on this topic. So I'm going to bring out some different precepts and, you know, go through some different points. And Lord willing, it be edifying to the elect of the nation of Israel, man. But, you know, um, being in this truth, we pretty much rejoice at the, um, at the signs of Esau, Edom's kingdom. Was that <laughs> we, we we rejoice at the signs of Esau Edom's kingdom coming to an end, you know, the destruction of this place, um, the uproars of the people, the chariot sightings, the civil unrest, the um, the earthquakes, the pestilences, the famines. We rejoice in that the the deaths, because all of these are the signs are signs that, you know. Isaiah 55 and 11, the words of Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai do not go out void and it will accomplish the things which it's said to accomplish. All right, so whilst this world is in turmoil and they're grieving and, you know, they want things to just go back to normal, you know, pre-2020, you know, we rejoice at the, at the, at the, um, the negative stuff that goes on in this place, man. Second Ezra 6 and 9 says, for Esau is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. So we understand, being the hopeful elect, that we're going to have to go through the turmoils, the perils, the, the um, um, you know, our faith being tried and tested in order for us to inherit the kingdom of heaven. So having that understanding and knowing the, the, the glory of the kingdom, it gets you in the mindset, oh, okay, cool. Well, let's go, let, let's get this out of the way. Because we, we're all desiring the kingdom. Us hopeful elect. We're all desiring the kingdom. But as it, as you read 2nd Ezra 7, you know, we have to walk down. And, and, and Matthew, is it Matthew 7? We have to enter in at the straight gate. That straight and narrow path, which is going to be difficult. All right? But it's a, uh, Lord willing, we enjoy until the end. It's, it's the, that's the path that we're willing to take in order to receive the magnitude and to be the first fruit of the kingdom of heaven, okay? So without further ado, let's bring out the precepts. And we're going to start here at Job chapter 20 and verse 4, and it reads, Knowest thou not this of old, since man was placed upon earth, that the triumphant of the wicked is short, and the joy of the hypocrite but for a moment? Now you see, according to Psalms 49 and 11, their inward thoughts, the inward thoughts of Esau, Edom, is that his kingdom is going to continue forever. All right. And that's not true because I just quoted, um, what, 2nd Ezra 6 and 9. So Esau, Edom, he's on his way out of here, man. And to us, that's just beautiful. And we pray that the Lord speeds up these prophecies. Elder Apostle Taha, he, he coined this year, the hopeful year. All prophecies come to pass. Do you know what that means? If all prophecies come to pass, that means the MOTB will be established. We'll be in the ultimate hour of temptation and ultimately our deliverance as well. Isaiah 26 and 20. You see, Micah 4, um, Malachi 4 and 2. Just a few precepts speaking on our deliverance, man. And if that all happens this year, that's beautiful, man. To get spiritual power, Isaiah 59 and 19, Luke 10 and 17, 
to about 20, 21, I think. That's beautiful, man. If that all happens this year, man, all praises to you. How about I haven't been in this truth that long. I'm, I'm a baby. I'll be honest. And I feel this way. I can only imagine how the elder apostles who have been in this truth 30, 40 years, how they feel, man. You know? <laughs> but anyways, reading on, Job 20 and 6. Though his excellency mount to the heavens and his head reach unto the clouds, yet he shall perish forever like his own dung. Because what does it say? Revelation 13 and 10. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. Now all nations are going to be under subjection to us for a thousand years. And then after that a thousand years, um, after the a thousand years, pursuant to Obadiah 1 and 18, the Edomites are going to be um, gathered into a pit and burnt up. You see, let me put this window down a bit. hot man you know the weather is um it's warming up all right um they which have seen him shall say where is he you know because soon we are we are never gonna have to behold the wicked anymore we're not gonna have to see esau edom ever again and i think that's just beautiful man you know knowing all the wickedness that has happened under this devil you know to to not be able to see this devil again that's beautiful, man. You know? Let's go to the book of um, Zephaniah, chapter 1, verse 14. And it reads, The great day of the Lord is near. It is near and hasteth greatly. Even the voice of the day of the Lord, the mighty man shall cry there bitterly. So that, that you know, Esau right now, he's the mighty man. You got the military might. He's got the influence. Well, guess what? He's going to be crying bitterly in that day. All right, he's not going to be able to prevail against Yahweh by Hashem Shai. When Yahweh Shai comes with those angels, Revelation one and seven, or Revelation sixteen, around about verse twelve, Esau is not going to be able to prevail against Yahweh Shai and the angels, man. Okay. Verse 15, that day is a day of wrath, a day of trouble and distress, a day of wasteness and desolation. It's lucky, a day of wasteness and desolation, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness. Because, you know, those nuclear missiles are going to cause what? Mushroom clouds. So... They're going to detonate and then the, the, the smoke is going to go up into the heavens and um, that's going to block out the sun and the moon. So it's just going to be thick, dark clouds in that day. And, you know, there's actually a preset. Let me see if I can find it where it talks about how in that day, the sun and the moon are going to, are, are, are going to hold their position. They're going to stop. Right, let, me, um, let me see if I can find it. One second. And if I can't find that, I'll just move on because, you know, I'm on my lunch break right now. Uh, but I really do want to find it, man. Lord willing, I do. Give me a second. Uh... Bear with me a minute. Yeah, let me name, I, I, I'm trying to look at my notes, but let me just go on Google. It's a lucky.
um, So lucky man, I really want to find the scripture man. Uh... Oh, it might be in um um Habakkuk 3. I think it's in Habakkuk 3. Hold on. No. Ah, uh, so lucky. Ah, yes. The Wadi Ahaba Shemi Yes. Habakkuk 3 and 11. The sun and moon stood still in their habitation. And you see, the, the, the whole chapter of Habakkuk 3 is talking about when um, um, Yahweh Shai returns and destroys this place. Okay? You can read it here for yourself. You know, um, so Habakkuk 3 and 11. The sun and moon stood still in their habitation. At the light of thine arrows they went. And at the shining of thy glittering spear. And what's that glittering spear? Or um, 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 at the light of thine arrows. That is the, uh, the nuclear missiles, man. So when they're being shot throughout the ends of the earth, the sun and the moon are actually going to stand still, man. You see, even, even the creation fears Yahweh by Hashem Shai. But you've got these proud ass, uh, uh, um, 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 you know, mortal human beings. Who believe they can overcome the creator. And that's crazy, man. Even the sun and the moon, they're going to stand still in the great day of the Lord, man. Can you imagine that? The Wadi Ahaba Shimi al for allowing me to find the scripture, man. So let's go back to Zephaniah uh, 1. And we was at, um, so we read verse 15. Verse 16 now. A day of the trumpet, an alarm against the fenced cities. And against the high towers, and I will bring distress upon men that they shall walk like blind men because they have sinned against the Most High, against Yahweh Bashem Yahushai, and their blood um, shall be poured out as dust and their flesh as the dung. So there's going to be a lot of bloodshed when Isaiah 63 is fulfilled. Who is this that coming from Eden with dyed garments from Bozrah? That's Yahweh Shai returning and those chariot, uh, in his chariot along with those other chariots, man, being the angels. Okay? So there's going, to be, there's going to be a lot of death and a lot of destruction at the returning of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. Okay? Verse 18. Neither their silver nor their gold shall be able to deliver them in the day of the Lord's wrath. Your silver, your gold, your money. There's nothing that's going to be able to save you. The only thing that's going to be able to save you is if you are a part of the elect. That's the only thing that will bring you salvation. Um, but the whole land shall be devoured by the fire of his jealousy. That land is America, a.k.a. Babylon the Great. That's, that's you know, Zechariah 5 and 4 talks about how, and it shall enter into the house of the thief. That's, the, that's those chariots entering into uh, um, um, the land of America. And they're pretty much already doing that now. You know, you've got those chariot sightings um, um, increasing over in the land of the thief, America. That's where the great destruction is going to take place. That's also the land that's going to be completely destroyed at the coming of our Lord and Saviour, Yahweh Shai. So all these things that are happening are pointing towards this prophecy being fulfilled. Okay? So our salvation is a lot nearer than when we believed, man. Lord willing, man, Abaratazar, Abaratazar, we are out of here this year, you know. But if, if it goes on to 2024, 2025, it is where it is. But, you know, that's the hope, man, because really and truly, you know, the scriptures say how the, the prophets love not their lives until until the death. You know, we, we hate dwelling in Esau, Edom's wicked society, to be quite honest with you, man. We hate it here, okay? 
for um, uh, continuing on in verse 18, for he shall make even a speedy riddance of all them that dwell in the land. Revelation 18 talks about how it's going to take just one hour for, for Yahweh Shai and his angels to destroy this place, man. Mainly the land of America, but to completely wipe down, you know, this, this kingdom, this rulership. It's going to take just one hour, man. 60 minutes. All right, so that's the speedy riddance. Let's, from there, let's go to, um, let me see how much time I've got left, okay. <laughs> Excuse me. Let's go to Baruch, chapter 4. verse 21 and it reads be of good cheer O my children cry unto the lord and he will deliver you from the power and hand of the enemies and that's what we're doing you know we, we're in good cheer because we understand we got next our kingdom is, is is coming okay but we're also crying out unto the lord how do you cry out unto the lord through prayer through doing these lessons going out on the highways and the byways you know that's us crying out unto the lord Okay, verse 22, for my hope is in the everlasting, that he will save you. And joy is come unto me from the Holy One, because of the mercy which shall soon come unto you from the everlasting, our Saviour. So us receiving salvation, that's us receiving mercy from Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahushai. Being redeemed from this harsh captivity, this hard bondage that we're in right now. Yeah, it's a bit easier now. But we're still yet this day in our captivity, pursuing to Baruch 3 and 8. Verse 23, for I sent you out with mourning and weeping. But the Most High will give you to me again with joy and gladness forever. And that's just beautiful, man. You know, soon we ain't going to have to shed a tear anymore. You know, we ain't going to have to... To wake up early we ain't gonna have to slave in esau edom society all right we ain't gonna be crying no more and if we are crying we're crying tears of joy all right so this is what's coming this is what's promised unto the nation of israel the 12 tribes of israel beginning with the elect okay um verse 24 like as now the neighbors of sion I've seen your captivity you know all these other nations have seen our captivity okay so shall they shortly see so shall they see shortly your salvation from our power which shall come upon you with great glory all right those chariots man it says they traveled in the greatness of their strength you know they're coming with great power and glory you know the chariots are made out of all sorts of precious materials gold silver all sorts of bright lights, you know, powerful, you know, like no um, brand new car could compare to the, to, the, to the magnificence of the chariots, man. Let's put it that way, okay? Um, verse 25, my children, suffer patiently. The wrath that has come upon you from the Most High. Because ultimately, we need to understand we are in this position because of our transgressions. We are paying for our sins, either in this life or in our former lives. But we're soon about to be um, uh, redeemed from that. Okay? So Baruch 4 and 25 again. My children, suffer patiently the wrath that has come upon you from the Most High. For thine enemy hath persecuted thee, but shortly, but shortly... Thou shalt see his destruction and shall tread upon his neck. We're going to have these other nations in captivity. All right. Psalms 2 and 11. Ask of me and I will give thee the heathen for thine inheritance. Okay. Verse 26. My delicate ones have gone rough ways. Who are the delicate ones? The Israelites beginning with the elect. My delicate ones have gone rough ways and were taken away. As a flock caught of the enemies. Be of comfort, O my children, and cry unto the Most High, for ye shall be remembered of him that brought these things unto you. Okay, so the Lord, he's going to remember his people once again, beginning with the elect. He's going to have mercy on us. He's going to redeem us. He's going to save us. Okay, and we don't need to worry about 
whatever Esau Edom is going to pull up, uh, pull out the trick bag, what sort of military weapon, or how mighty he may appear to be. None of that shit matters, man. And and the scripture to back that up is um. Isaiah 59, verse 19. So shall they fear the name of the Lord. So shall they fear the name of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai from the west, and his glory from the rising of the sun, which is the east. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. That standard is going into spiritual power, man. We're going to have divine intervention, miracles taking place in these last days. Angels are going to, have to, are going to intervene, okay? Brothers are, uh, are going to be raised up with spiritual power to defend themselves in these times. All, all sorts of crazy things are going to be happening, all right? And all of this is going to be um, to, to magnify the names of Yahweh by Hashem Yahushai, not for our vain glory, Okay? I'm going to leave you with one last precept. This is, um, this is, um, Romans chapter 13 and verse 11. And that knowing the time that now is high time to awake out of sleep for our salvation, um, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. Our salvation is nearer than when we believed, man. Understand the magnitude of that statement, Israel. Our salvation is nearer than when we believed. You know, so, soon we're going to be in the kingdom of heaven, man. And you know, the funny thing about it is that we've, we've been in captivity for so long. We've been in hell for so long. Like, you know, you, you can kind of imagine the kingdom of heaven, you know, as far as your imagination takes you, but we can't fully comprehend the, 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 the magnitude of, um, of what we're about to inherit, man. Scriptures say, in my father's house are many mansions. What does that mean? That means there's uh, um, uh, many planets. We're going to inherit planets, brothers, man. Planets, can you imagine that having your own planet? You know, um, because we understand that that um, Isaiah 66 says how the earth is the most high, Yahweh's footstool, so that means the universe is his house. And if there's many mansions in this house, that's talking about planets, man. We're going to be immortal, we're never going to die, we're going to have slaves, we're never, we're never going to have to work again. Our women are going to be in order. We're, we're, we're going to deal with as many women as we want. All, all the women we're going to deal with are going to be virgins. You know? Um, we're not going to sin no more. That's big, man. So we ain't going to die no more. Because Romans 6 and 23 says that the wages of sin... <clears throat> excuse me. The wages of sin is death. But if we're not sinning no more... Because we're going to have the law, statutes and commandments written in our inward parts pursuant to 1 Corinthians 15. We ain't never going to die. We're going to be immortal. We're going to be X-Men. We're going to be superheroes. You know? And ev everything we do, absolutely everything we do will be done in righteousness. And will please Yahweh by Hashem Yahushai. Before we even make a request unto the Lord, the Lord is already going to answer it for us. This is, this is what we're heading into, man. This is our blessing, Israel. This is the times that are coming. This is what we're laboring for. You know, sometimes just to um, sit here and think about that, it, it, it kind of blows your mind. You know? Let me bring out um, Isaiah 64. Isaiah 64. And verse 4. For since the beginning of the world, men have not heard nor perceived by the ear, neither has I seen, O power, beside thee, what he hath prepared for him that waited for him. So only the Most High knows what he's prepared um, for the nation of Israel 
beginning with the elect. We don't even know the full magnitude of it. You know, we can we can we can kind of just imagine it and visualize. But I mean, you know, your imagination is it, it can only go so far when you've lived in Esau Edom society, and 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 things have pretty much been locked into this realm, and your perception included as well, compared to the magnitude of of the blessings that we're about to receive, as the sons and daughters of the of Yahweh by of the Most High, Yahweh, okay. So, <laughs> salvation is nearer than when we believed and, 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 and we're going to get what we asked for and more, you know, and, and, and that's, that's something worth laboring for, something worth suffering for. And let me, let me actually, um, how does that scripture go? Um... I believe it's in Romans 8. Um, Romans 8 and 18, is it? Yep. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. You see? So, you know, it might seem like we're catching a lot of hell here on this side, but compared to the magnitude of the glory we're about to receive, this is nothing, man. One more scripture I'm going to bring out to back that up. Uh, it's 2 Corinthians 4 and 17 for our light affliction, okay, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Eternal, man. It's crazy. Verse 18. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. The kingdom of heaven. We can't physically see it right now. But that's what we set our minds upon. That's what we set our focus on. Our sights on. Okay? Which really and truly, the kingdom of heaven starts from within us. The kingdom of heaven dwelleth within you, as Yahweh Shai said. But the things which are not seen... For the things which are seen are temporal. All these physical things you see here, they're temporal. But the things which are not seen are eternal, man. All right? So we just got to suffer patiently. And, you know, measure, measuring the times diligently, we can see our salvation is nearer than when we believe, man. Okay? But, you know, I've pretty much made the point. That's what I'm going to bring up for, for now, man. So um, hopefully this lesson was edifying. Until the next time I say Shalom.